The word of God is Allah and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. The renewal of Lord's mercies every day, the year of our Lord, 2015, October 29th. The discourse that we are continuing with the polity of privileges has to be made known very clearly to each and every believer of this unique dispensation of the church. The greatness of this unique dispensation followed by the real worth of our true life that we need to live in the light of the Lord have to be made a thorough manifestation for maximum glorification unto Christ, provided we take number one priority to learn Bible doctrine. There is nothing more important in this earth than to learn Bible doctrine. For a believer, there is nothing more security to be fortified than Bible doctrine. And as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, being very much exemplified to the core, unique one, and the best one reserved for the last the millennium, wherewith we can see, we come with the Lord to rule. The learning of the great failure, why, once again, though we rule, they are unbelievers in the millennium. When we look to the future, we can concentrate very much upon the present time where we have been residing on this earth. The calling wherewith Lord has called us, the walking of which where we need to walk worthy of the vacation where Lord has chosen us, and the spiritual liberty wherewith Lord has set us free. And in order to make us to be very much the sound judgment purely by the ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, we need to make sure in the privacy of our priesthood that each and every believer has been given this great worth, the great responsibility. This great worth and the great responsibility laid down upon the shoulders of each and every believer is nothing but to use his privacy to tell to Lord God the Father if the confession of our sins has been accumulated so that the fellowship has been broken out. Either by thought, word, or deed, each and every believer of the human race will definitely sin. And if a man says, I have not sinned, there cannot be a great thing, greater stumbler than this man who says that I have not sinned. And since he is a liar, the Bible tells, the biblical principle of exegesis explains, none there is righteous on this earth. At the moment of salvation, we don't completely bury our all sin nature like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's virgin birth. But the all sin nature loses power upon you, sovereignty upon you. And what do you take? You have been told to take the preeminence power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to control your soul so that you will not fulfill the lust pattern of your flesh, but rather you will walk a walk which is holy or spiritual. So that, number one, you can take the spiritual submission as the only breath. And if this spiritual submission has not been taken to you, you cannot even budge an inch in this unique dispensation of the church age. How many people have been wasting this spiritual life? How many people are failing not to go to the point of maximum glorification of Christ? And how many people are really ignoring doctrine? They say doctrine what it is. Who is having the time today to sit and study? Who is having the time today to sit and explain through exegesis? The soft pillow all time could be a good and clear consciousness, honest consciousness. If the soft pillow, which have to be of honest consciousness, has not been there, you know how hard it would be for you to sleep when you're sleeping with the hard pillow upon your neck. But the only reality what you and I have to take into consideration is that when we are not able to have that soft consciousness towards Lord, the true consciousness of true judgment of self-evaluation towards the Lord, it's not possible that we are doing Lord's work very right. 
the same principality which you and I have to learn, the same principality which you and I have to consider, pertaining to the things of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is of so great and essential. Without having that particular spiritual submission to make our conscience to be absolutely clear and true, to stand at the judgment seat of Christ without having any pain in our heart or any ignorance to be pleaded because I couldn't complete this unique spiritual life will be a great plea upon our hearts that we are not capable of understanding the true reality of Bible doctrine and the necessary information in our souls. The only problem that we are existing today in the church, no true spiritual submission unto Christ. The greater the failure to have this true spiritual submission unto Christ, the greater the life that we have to be yielded unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear brethren, any time we could start our discourse, it is quite essential to note that we use rebound, 1 John 1 9. The confession of your sins. Without the confession of your sins, you cannot have right into fellowship with Jehovah. Without the true confession of your sins, you cannot come back and learn the word of the Lord, which Lord intends to you to be learned. So we shall have a rebound and a word of prayer and come back and look into today's discourse, what Lord has done and kept for us in eternity past. So the confession of our sins through rebound and getting back into the fellowship of Lord God Almighty is so great and essential for us in order to make number one priority for Bible doctrine. Without the knowledge of Bible doctrine, we cannot even go. Without the spiritual ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we cannot even learn the word of truth. So make sure that we use rebound in the privacy of our priesthood and get back to learn the knowledge of Christ. Father, we're grateful for the privilege that the was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things as we're going to study so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. For we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen. The great and unique dispensation, what we are going through in this unique dispensation of the church, demands nothing but the knowledge. In the past, the people failed the failure to learn in the word of the Lord. The present trends of historical realm, what we are going to look, though our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ controls history, given us the spiritual liberty to learn the word of the Lord more clearly. We, the men of this church age, are been using the lust patterns of our old sin nature to be fulfilled rather than the reality of the word. We are not obedient as such how Ezekiel was, how Jeremiah was, how Moses was, though Moses stumbled at the point of getting the rock or water through it. But now in this unique dispensation of the church as we are going through and day by day walk, we need to learn how obedient we have to be to proclaim the word and to leave behind a life that is quite a legendary impact in this angelic conflict. Never you will have a chance to come back again and look for the invisible hero ship. Never you will have a time life again to come back and consider, Lord, I will this time live a life of unique spiritual one. The protocol plan of God, the mystery doctrine of the church. The polity of privileges which have been given to you, which have been not designed now, that they have been existing long back in eternity past, but now they have been made manifested to us. And in order to take it and apply it to your life, you require something known as obedience, submission. If you are not able to submit yourself unto the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using rebound in the privacy of your priesthood, by not grieving it, squelching it, cosmic one, cosmic two, nor lying to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is no way possible for you to grow up to the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Neither you will know what is the true purpose that have been best toward so many things. Neither will come to know the 40 irrevocable absolutes given to you among that one exceptional because of the filling of the Holy Spirit which you will lose when you sin. The 39 absolutes are yours. The primary assets, the secondary assets. 
the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit worked before you could believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, how it acts in you as an activated human spirit. The greater the things for us to understand the simple truth, the greater the things that we have been rejecting to understand the simple truth. The only problem with us is either we are not able to understand the true work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. Neither we are not capable of understanding the true responsibility of a pastor teacher being laid down upon his shoulders. Happy is a pastor teacher who exegetes the word. Happy are those believers who learn Bible doctrine from those pastor teachers who really exegete the word from the original languages of the scriptures. It is not according to the translation as such what it is and what it is not. Whether it is Tishandorf, or whether it is Lockman, or whether it is the Cambridge or Westminster, or the reverse standard versions written by Tregelius or Tishandorf, or Wycliffe, or Erasmus. The sound judgment you can get by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, dear brethren, and if you are not having the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in right and true fellowship with Him, no matter what the best translation, no matter what the best exegesis has been given to you, you will never be enlightened to know the seriousness of the condition. The seriousness of the condition of today's importance towards Bible doctrine. The seriousness of the condition that you have been just as a, sent just as a pilgrimage on this earth for a short while of time. And this short gap of time, you need to be faithful to the Lord. The greater the failure to understand this short gap of time which we have to go through will definitely make many people not to know the true worthiness and the true reality and the importance of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. The greater the failure to understand this simple truth that you are just a pilgrimage. You are just going to pass by for a few years on this earth. And how much pure loyalty you need to be for Lord's word. How much more loyalty you need to be in executing this maximum glorification of Christ. By yielding forth the spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy. And then by looking back and coming into spiritual maturity. Why aren't we not capable of understanding and realizing to answer back Zakir Naik or any other Sheikh Hamadid or any other cults or not able to fall down the trends of apostasy in our church age? Because you have not been thoroughly obedient. You can pull down all imaginations, all knowledge which goes against the knowledge of God and pull it down provided when your obedience is ready, said Second Corinthians 10.5. What is our obedience? Where are we obedient? On what for we are obedient? There can never be anything obedient for a man as far as the best of example what we can note and what we can quote. The obedience for his own belly. He jumps around and looks around to do whatsoever the best it is for him to get on upon his belly. To accumulate some stuff which is garbage. And in order to survive upon that garbage, he wants to stay for a lifetime long, long and he wants to work out the things pertaining to it. The one who has been created in the image of God is not worthy to walk. Why God created man? To glorify him in this angelic conflict. Though the nature is readily obedient to obey God's word, The seasons are ready to obey God's word. Has not the job described for us? What is God? What are his works? If God wants to describe through a prophet or through a pastor or through a, any person in his unique dispensation of the church age or in the millennium, what he wants to describe concerning a man. If it is for the Old Testament saints, he will say those are the ensembles who have failed except few members who have the endowment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in performing the work. If we consider to the New Testament of the, this particular sect of Alekhenikitesis, new spiritual species unto Christ, how many people will be really present for individual witnesses and corporate witnesses to glorify the Lord to the maximum? How many people have really followed the doctrine of dispensations? Before the key could be formed, Lord created the lock. And this lock is dispensations. The key is none other but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in return to form that 
lock lord created the key the key to all knowledge the key to all subject the key to all understanding is none other but our lord and savior jesus christ why dispensations have been created for you so that you can have importance upon our lord and savior jesus christ so that you can know him you can learn him you can orient yourself to the life of bible doctrine your mind to be thinking as per the word of the Lord. Your attitude towards Lord and Savior Jesus Christ before salvation. Your attitude towards his mind which is none other but Bible doctrine after salvation. And if you don't have the spiritual submission, how can you learn the importance of Bible doctrine, dear brethren? The greater the failure of day-to-day -day life in our life that as we go through in this unique dispensation of the church, Never you will get back again to purchase the time, the mandate given for us in Ephesians 5.16. Never you will find to awake, arise and go forth and show the reality of Bible doctrine. Never. The millennium, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is literally present. And that is the, and that is the time you have some play to play with the astrocy of emotion. Not in this church age. This church age is purely you are disciplined to the soul to learn the knowledge of Bible doctrine, Bible doctrine, Bible doctrine. Not out the best sophisticated technology you may have to prove that you may eradicate death. No matter, you may have the best instruments to tell that you can change or once again make a man alive through cloning or through cryonics or XYZ trends of the so-called sophisticated realm of the Freemasonry or XYZ trends, what are the cults we do have. But all these things are not possible for you to stay. The only reality that can stain for a long time and a lifetime is none other but the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Heaven and earth may pass away with an ink of an eye, less than an ink of an eye, less than a millisecond. Lord can destroy this earth. Even a million, a million of a second, Lord can transform your soul into the edification complex which has been thoroughly built as per his blueprint. But Lord will not do that. He has given us a time to learn a day-by-day -day process so that we can discipline our soul in the knowledge of Bible doctrine in a day-by-day -day process. Without getting into that knowledge of a day-by-day -day process, we are using a life that is absolutely worthless. And the grace that has been laid down upon our shoulders when we appear at the judgment seat of Christ, we may find 00.00 as our product of divine viewpoint or the energy of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to yield the fruit. 00.00, absolute 00.00. That's why the spiritual submission is a must. Ezekiel was been told to open the mouth. And he wide opened the mouth. When he is opening the mouth, that is what subjection, that is what humility, that is what a process of learning. He has been taken care to be fed. When he ate, then he is capable of expounding the scriptures. When you have been prepared as a pastor teacher in the original languages of the truth, so that blessed is the man, happy is the man who exegetes, the, and blessed is the man who hears that exegesis. The pastor teacher duty cannot have this soft pillow apart from doing the work of right exegesis, dear brethren. His soul can have an absolute rest, provided what the best he has done in a day-by-day -day process. Today, the time that has been bestowed upon us, today, the renovation of the mercy that has been given upon us, for his grace, how much we are yielding forth, for his grace, how much we are showing forth, for his grace, how much we are really given the time, which is true, worth of quality, a quality of good intrinsic value, wherewith you need not be ashamed when you appear at the judgment seat of Christ, but rather you have done the truth. You have mattered the blueprint. And though you have been given this great quality of privileges, how much we have really shown forth to the Lord. The day-by-day -day process that we go through you know very well you count. You count to the point to tell that I was such a such of an old man. I was such a such of a newborn baby of 10 years past, 20 years past. 
By the time you need to be the communicators of the truth of the word of the Lord, we are still not the communicators of the truth of Bible doctrine. And why aren't we not communicators? Because you have not been consistent enough to grasp. The greater the failure to grasp in the consistency towards the knowledge of Bible doctrine, the greater the failure of our spiritual life. This great spiritual life which will never come back after the rapture. The Yusabaya, which is the Greek tell. It is not the accurate proficiency of the language that has been needed to the Lord. If at all it has been needed, it has been needed for the spiritual submission so that you can learn, you can be edified, you can be grown up. If there is no importance than the word of the Lord in this church age, there can never be any other importance in this church age. The men may vary, the men may fail, the men may come. The nature obeys the Lord. We the men who have been created in the image of God never obey Him. Do you know the only prime reason why we don't obey Him? The only prime reason why we don't obey Him is purely the negligence to know the true fear of Jehovah. The negligence to find ourselves in the delight of the fear of Jehovah. Happy are we all the time looking upon the cheap substitutes. Happy are we all the time looking upon those things which they think it is absolutely great for them to be needed. And aren't we really failing our Lord? And I'm not really using it to tell literal fail, but symbolically or emblematically so that you can know what exactly you are doing in this unique dispensation. You can know what exactly you are performing in this great realm of the church age, very unique church age. What you can show forth to the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. Know you not that he will be evaluated as per the knowledge given to Apostle Paul, he wrote for us in 1 Corinthians 3, 10 and following through the verse of 16. Built upon this strong foundation, foundation is only one, that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And depending upon this foundation, how you are going to construct your house, either it is with wood, wear, stubble, or gold, silver, or precious stones, it will be manifested at the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema throne. And at the judgment seat of Christ, if it has been done, and if it is standing the great fire of the Lord, it's your reward. If it is not... You have lost the reward, but your salvation has been secured because the foundation has been laid down upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The walk that you are walking, the holy walk that you are performing, if it is not able to jibe with the ministry of that fire, if it is not able to stand, do you know what is going to stand? Gold, silver and precious stones. Do you know what does it represent? The pure ministry, the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that pure ministry we can call a spiritual submission. A spiritual submission of eating and expounding your life. If you are a believer, you need to expound it into the realm of each and every walk. The holy ambassadorship which you have to manifest. The holy witnessing through your life. And if you are a pastor teacher, you have to expound the scriptures through exegesis. And there can never be any soft pillow than your good consciousness towards the Lord that you have done the work. Do you know when a pastor teacher will have a good consciousness? When he has finished from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, each and every word exegeted to the praise of his glory and his grace by a daily substitution of the truth. That's the only time he will be absolutely in a pure state of consciousness, dear brethren. And in order to do that, what he has to do, number one, rebound, get back into the fellowship. There cannot be any greater responsibility for a believer than to use rebound. And there cannot be any other great reference in the Bible for us. In 1 John 1, 9, the great fellowship was to get back into the Lord so that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, can in return energize our activated human spirit and learn the word of the Lord very clearly, very accurately, dear brethren. And I do know very well People may think otherwise when we tell for them to use rebound and get back into the fellowship in the privacy of the priesthood. 
they say, let the pastor pray for me, I will get back into fellowship. No, you are responsible for your own decisions. You are responsible for your own failures. You are responsible for your own actions. And the greater you fail to look upon that reality of the truth, the greater will be the failure for you to really conjugate your life towards this earthly realm of pilgrimage trip. You cannot live someone's life. You cannot take someone's strength. You need to have your own acquired strength. Because you have been given to execute your own spiritual life. This acquired strength you need to practice day by day. And a day by day process of learning the word of the Lord will give you this great strength. And greater the failure for us to know and to look and to consider this great life. Greater will be our life into absolute danger. Absolute danger of reality from being alienated of this unique escrow blessings in time as well as in eternity. Therefore, dear brethren, always make sure that you have been controlled by the Spirit. Greater your sin, either by thought, word, or deed, greater should be your rebound than the sin, because you have been called as a priest. You do not wait like the Old Testament rituals. If the Lord wants to have a blueprint about these people of the Old Testament, He will say they were failures in the ensembles. Hey, we should not be the same thing for us for Arachane Ketesis in the church age. Because at least the Old Testament saints were really racial creation, but we are being called for spiritual creation, the 24 hours ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, permanently indwelling in you. 24 into not 7, 24 into your lifetime on this earth, till to the last breath. Each and every second you can be filled with the Spirit. Each and every millisecond you can use rebound to get back into the filling of the Spirit. Because you have a tough target on your shoulders for spiritual submission. You have a tough target on your shoulders to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine in a day-by-day -day process. The greater you lose the time on this earth, just a, slot, just a short span of your time on this earth, the greater will be a failure for you to execute a right spiritual life in this church age. We have much more importance to be given in this unique dispensation, particularly the mystery doctrine, the polytheism of privileges, the polytheism of metaphor which Apostle Paul uses in the book of Philippines to tell them the contrast between the Roman government and the government of our heavenly kingdom, the contrast which he explains in a day-by-day -day process to tell to us the reality of the truth and to cause us to know the importance of Bible doctrine so that what are we, where are we, and how are we going through? And what is required much more to use for the spiritual resurrection. And this great spiritual resurrection which has to depend upon the pure intake of Bible doctrine through the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So that you can master all your old sin nature, though it has lost power, it constantly tempts you to sin. Tempts you to sin, to look upon the prayer of life, the lust of flesh and the lust of eyes. For the pastor teachers, it will cause them to tempted for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley, making ministry only for money, money, money. When Apostle Paul intended that the dog will return to its own vomit, he might have intended or something to tell to us, a great lesson to be learned. But today, when we say, dog returns to its own vomit, it is an apostasy, though they knew the truth, it is like Hebrews 10, 26. Though they have come to the knowledge of the truth, there is no more sacrifice for them to be given back. A rejection of the daily process of learning Bible doctrine, there is no more sacrifice to plead ignorance at the judgment seat of Christ, dear brother. Has not our Lord told to live a life that could be worthy to the praise of His glory and His grace? Has not our, our Lord has been exemplifying even through the nature to tell us the reality, what we have to be in Christ. So that we can learn from the lower things as he has made us lower to make the angels to learn from our day-to-day -day life. Has not our Lord been pleading for us to amend our ways? To get back into the paths of Bible doctrine more clearly, more earnestly, more diligently than ever before. Dear brethren, why do you want to waste your life in useless and worthless things which have no value at all in this church age? There is no other sacrifice for you to be given to you, though once you have come to the knowledge of enlightenment. And sad are the people who have lost that process of enlightenment in a day-by-day -day taking of intake of Bible doctrine. There is nothing in this world that is permanent. 
Six transit glory among day. The glory of this world will perish off. But we need to work for the thing which will never perish. The imperishable food. The, in, the incorruptible crown. The incorruptible glory. As our Lord is holy, even we have been mandated to be holy in the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in a day by day process, dear brethren. Greater the failure in our life to look. Greater the failure in our life to understand the reality of Bible doctrine. Greater will be the failure for each and everything that you have been called in this life. If you have been called to witness, you will be a failure. If you have been called for an evangelist, you will be a failure. If you have been given the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, you will be an utter flop. Without preparation, God doesn't use you. Without preparation, you cannot stand to the calling where it Lord has called for you to do his work effectively with a sincere and a pure heart. A heart which does not pump. And you know what? Whenever we speak about heart, the toughness of the heart, the mental stubbornness, or the like an adamant flint, Job describes for us in 41.24. The heart of the Lord is like a stone, a firm stone which will grind up everything. Do you know why the heart of the Lord is like a firm stone? When you are not capable of meeting his essence, you cannot stand, you will be grinded off. When our Lord has given for us a certain sect to be followed, certain rule to be executed, certain protocol plan of the Lord to be made thoroughly manifested, and when we are not capable of looking unto it or standing unto it, you are kaput, you are out. Lord doesn't compromise there. Lord doesn't look you there. When he has sent us to this earth, the same herdament heart, which has been great stronger, to firm us up or to even grind us out. It doesn't compromise with the cheap substitutes what you think your morality of work can do with Lord. The cheap substitutes of the standards that you're going to pass through in this earth. No. When he has designed for you in eternity past to learn the knowledge of dispensations and he has made a key that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to open that lock, you have to go through a process of channel. Only that process of channel is nothing but spiritual submission, day-by-day day process. A day-by-day day walk under the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has not Galatians written to us and tells in 5.16, walk you in the Spirit, so that you will not fulfill the lust patterns of your flesh. And what are we walking today? Contrary. Many of the people will laugh when we say to be knelt down and read the word of the Lord, to be knelt down and write the word of the Lord, and to worship the Lord in kneeling to Him. Do you know what do they say? They laugh. And why do they laugh? Do you know it? It is a punishment they call. Morons they are. Apostle John was being knelt down upon the scene of Sunday when he was being given the information by the angel to write. Daniel was been kneeling three times a day and praying to the Lord to gain the information concerning the future vision of his Israelites. And what are we today? Though we have good strength and good energy in our body. Anyhow, after you have been old, you cannot do that. Even in the old age, Daniel did it. That's the greatness of him. Even in the old age, every man can do it, provided he has that mental stability. He has a strength in his mind, not a strength in his legs. Do you know what? They laugh. At the judgment seat of Christ, the Lord will laugh. Now you may claim excuses, telling to the point, you may not kneel down, you may not do this, you may not do that. A time will come when each and every knee shall bow unto the Lord. In the past, above in the heaven, beneath the earth, and the people on the earth will have to bow down. And you need to practice it right now. It will be a greater benefit for you. That you have been acquainted with the process. That you are in shape. And the great the failure for you to understand the simple dogmatical truths to know. And to have right and to fellowship with the Lord. The greater will be the failure for you to understand the true worthiness of the reality of your life on this earth. Dear brethren, let's amend our ways. 
Let's look upon the spiritual submission. Let's eat the food as Jeremiah 15, 16 tells, I found thy word and I ate it. And he's using allegorically to emblemize it, to symbolically tell the truth. And Jeremiah was being told to make these people drunk, and Jeremiah made it to drunk in Jeremiah 25, 16. And each and every pastor teacher, if that's the process given to him, to make the people to drunk into the realm of this unique mystery doctrine of the church age, the unique spiritual life, the spiritual self-esteem followed by spiritual autonomy, and then by spiritual maturity, how many of the people are really making them to be drunk? When you first drink it, then you can make them to drink it. But you have not drunk it. Because it is a hard thing for you to drink, isn't it? So what do you do? Waste your time. Cheap substitutes. Remember, when the Lord makes his heart a firm stone, a grinding stone, and when we are not capable of understanding that stone, you know, first, his heart is like a flesh to make us to believe in him. And then he makes his heart like Adam and stone, a greater stone, stronger, harder. The only reason being behind that, that he has made his stone harder, that's so that there is nothing that can go against the grinding mill of his essence. Even we have to be fleshy enough to learn the word of the Lord. And as we grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, the standards, the rules and regulations, the consciousness, the norms and standards, what we follow in our life, have to be greater, firmer, and harder than that millstone, which can easily grind off. What the human viewpoint, what the lust patterns of this in nature, what it can grind off, your negligence, your ignorance, your arrogance. And your three arrogant skills of self-justification, self-absorption, and self-deception. Your ignorance to be washed out. You cannot stand before that great Lord. If you are not able to grind out all the stupidified thoughts, all these emotional attitudes, all this teaching of good things, all have to be washed out, washed out, washed out. They have to be grinded out. And you need to set up a standards which are there in a quiet essence towards the Bible doctrine in a day-by-day -day process. The greater our failure to have that essence in the Bible doctrine in a day-by-day -day process, the greater will be our milling stone in a failure not to work. And what do you think? You're going to stay permanent on this earth? That you will take so many years of time to change? And that's what we do find into the realm of the Roman Catholic people as well, Ignatius Lally. Though his concept or the description of the subject is very wrong, to visualize what you are, to visualize what you think. Imagination. Synthetic, not creative. And he tells, the manpower can do all these things. He followed the spiritual exercises, and then he came to the degree of Noise in two years, and then he tells he can be a scholar when he passes down the test in Noise. And then the coadjugator. And then the sacred people who can have real the sacred, sacred work. And then the watch care man. You know, this process, they should take minimum three or four years. Exactly in a day-to-day -day process, even in this church age, you cannot stay on a long time, dear brethren. The edification complex of the soul will demand for you minimum three years to four years to be learned in a day-by-day -day process, wherewith Apostle Paul has done his work. He didn't stop. He went to Arabia to learn doctrine, and he learned, and he came back, and he was teaching them the doctrine. And he laid down the importance for us through the Philippians, Colossians, and Ephesians, the great work towards the Philemon as well. Today, where are we in communicating this mystery doctrine? Happy returning to the own vomit to eat. And remember, there are no more sacrifices for you to be given. Though once you have been told to come and enlighten in the knowledge of the truth, and you have neglected it, no more sacrifice for you to be given under the judgment seat of Christ, so that you can have your word of saying, okay, forgive him. No, no chance. Lord's heart is like a firm stone. Greater than a grinding stone, it will grind off all the stupidified human viewpoints. Better you learn to grind it right now on this earth and heal the life that is worthy and glory towards Jehovah.
Therefore, dear brethren, you need to be very much essential to have your personal walk of submission to law. You need to be in a day-by-day -day process of experiential sanctification through the knowledge of Bible doctrine so that you should not stumble, so that you should not be a man of unlearned. And you should leave behind a great angelic conflict witness, either individual witness or corporate witness. Corporate, both wife and husband, it's a great part to be played. The great pain that, that has been laid up on the shoulders of a past teacher to be learned. The great pain that you have to be taken around, that you have to be considered around, and that you have to be thought around for the congregation, so that in return the congregation can go and tell and tell, train up their children while they shall hang into the precepts of the doctrines is great essential and a great work. The greater the failure on our part to learn this doctrine, the greater the failure on our part not to be training up our family. And the children, when they go astray without being taught by their parents, greater will be the impact upon this pivot, upon this nation that they are taking around into the five cycles of discipline. Dear brethren, the only simple truth what I can tell to you, be men. Be like men to take the responsibility laid down upon your shoulders, not like women. The greater the failure to learn the simple logical truth, the greater will be the failure for you not to know the importance of Bible doctrine. Not to know your true responsibility, not to know your true walk in the light of the Lord. And you will not come again to this earth, take it granted. Prior to the rapture, we need to work it out and we don't know when is the rapture. You have to live a life, a life that you're going to die today. And what you will set the things priority to your life. And if you could ask me, or if you could ask anyone of the spiritual-minded person revealed in the Bible, who follows the biblical principle of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit will tell to you, the top priority, though you're going to die today, this second, this moment, before the rapture could occur, or the rapture could occur, it has to be Bible doctrine more than the physical breath you take. It has to be Bible doctrine more than the physical food you eat. And it has to be the delight in the Bible doctrine and a walk to know in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, which is through the original languages of the scriptures, through proper exegesis of the word. And nothing more else than that. Ezekiel was been confronted to the point to tell, though the delight of your eyes has been dead, need not worry, you have my delight over here in that word. And when he has seen that vision, he couldn't speak to the Lord. He couldn't speak and open the mouth for seven days because he was in absolute shock. And when that great Lord tells to you not to weep, why will he not? He will just keep quiet because he has seen what is the vision of the Lord. Since today we don't have visions and dreams to be knelt and to be known, we don't value the things. We don't value the work that has been given in our hands to be properly taken care of. And that has to be led through the exegesis. Without exegesis, it is not possible for it to be expounded. Dear brethren, ponder over these things. I knew the tape is too long. When the people are watching in the YouTube, I do know it is only for two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. I am not a reproach of that. But the thing is, I still pity upon those who neglect the doctrine, which has to be number one priority in their life. The only reason why I really pity upon them, do you know? Because tomorrow when they die, they don't have this time to learn the doctrine again. And they do not know when is the rapture. The Lord wants every man to be saved and come to the knowledge of his truth. And when Lord graciously is granting us till his time, till his work laid on upon our shoulders to be done perfectly and accurately, we should be readily available to do the work rather than keeping ifs and buts as our excuses and clauses or alibis. Today, we have to go through the process of unique spiritual life. And if you're not going to go through the process of unique spiritual life through exegesis, Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ, dear brother. The greater are the men who will come to make their name, will make their fame, will make their money in the ministry. But few are the men 
who will come to the true praise and the worthy of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, ministry to magnify his word and honor his law. And who are they? At the judgment seat of Christ, Lord will make us to be manifested. And we need not worry. We need to worry only one thing. The work that has been laid on upon your shoulders, you have to go through it. The responsibility for you, you have to execute it. You cannot plead ignorance. For a believer to grow up to the knowledge of Bible doctrine, Second Peter 3.18, to be mindful of that, Second Peter 3.2, for a pastor teacher, Kerusothon Lagan, by Second Timothy 2.15. So which way you want to go, you decide. We shall continue in the next tape. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to be telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you is for very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. And whereas for the pastor teacher, the great man it is to Kerusothon Lagan, herald the word in season or out of season, so that Bible doctrine can be number one priority in our soul. And this Bible doctrine which we have to communicate is the only weapon for the diamond through my witnesses for the indwelling Trinity. And Bible will stand as diamond through my witnesses for us as well. And the diamond through my witnesses will be our hearers as well. And if there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide, rightly divide, and rightly proclaim the knowledge of truth. And whereas for the believers, the great mandate is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine so that you can know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And when you are being there under the mental ministry of blood, get the Holy Spirit because without which it is not possible for you to know. You will not search the scriptures diligently from the original languages. Dear brethren, this is your life. This has been destined, predestined for you in eternity past. And you have to execute this protocol plan of God. And you have to go through this unique spiritual life followed by spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity. The greater the failure for you to execute this life, the greater will be a shame that Lord has bestowed upon this allocated spirit people with such kind of a great wealth of all time. So which way you want to go, you decide. We shall continue in the next step. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it us a blessing and challenge our in Lord. For we ask it in question, Father. Amen.